All right, hey painting friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Stoof. I'm going to be doing a barn acrylic painting tutorial today. My other barn tutorial is one of my more popular videos. However, I get a lot of complaints in that video because the music is too loud. And I recorded that video several years ago um, when I was still figuring out the kinks of having a YouTube channel and all that stuff. So uh, this video will not have that background music. It's going to be a bit of a different barn landscape though. The last one was an autumn landscape behind the barn. This time I wanted to do a springtime landscape. For my materials today, I have an 11 inch by 14 inch canvas panel right here. I have a disposable paper palette with my acrylic heavy bodied paints on it. I'm using both Golden Brand and Liquitex Professional Brand. Uh, I also have a few of the more economic brand acrylic paints. You are welcome to use whatever brand of paint works best for your budget. However, these guys are gonna have a stronger pigmentation than the less expensive paints. My colors today are titanium white, phthalo green, naphthal red light, burnt umber, dioxazane purple, yellow ochre, magenta, cobalt blue, phthalo blue, olive green, if you have a sap green, that's gonna be a pretty similar one to this, and a cadmium yellow medium. I also have a cup of water that I'm gonna keep off to the side here, but you'll probably hear it swishing around as I clean off my brushes. I have some paper towels for drying off my brushes. And for my paint brushes today, I'm gonna to keep it simple with just four brushes. Um, I'm gonna get started by sketching out the concept with this smaller flat tip brush. Uh, and then after I sketch everything out, I'll start blocking in some background features with this larger flat tip brush. Uh, I also am gonna be using this filbert brush, which is pretty comparable, just slightly larger than that flat tip brush, the small one. And I also have a liner brush here for getting in a couple of those uh, little white detailed lines on the barn, maybe a couple grasses, blades of grass, uh, different little shadows in the flowers in the foreground. This brush is best for getting in those little details, or if you're painting lines, might be good for the fence as well. All right, now that we have looked at our materials, I want to quickly ask you to subscribe to my channel. That helps to support me. And every now and then I put out a new painting tutorial or a video related to my art career. So if you're interested in learning more about that, then hit that subscribe button. So as you can see, I have these four images of barns. The upper left was AI generated and the other three are images from online searches. I couldn't find exactly what I wanted for this painting. So I'm combining all four of these to create this painting for you guys. I like the flowers in the foreground of the lower right. I actually like that landscape and the clouds behind the barn as well, but I don't like that barn and I don't like that fence. I like the fence in the lower left, so I'm gonna try to use more of a full wooden fence behind the flowers. And then I like the barn shape from the upper left, the AI generated image, but I like the look on the like weathered pattern and the color of the barn in the upper right. So I'm gonna kind of merge all these together for you guys to create this painting. All right, to get started, I'm gonna dip my flat tip brush, my smaller flat tip brush in the water a little bit. The water's not like dripping off of it, but the brush is saturated. And I'm gonna take a little cobalt blue. Uh, you could use cobalt blue or brown or red, any, any darker color. And I'm just getting a little bit more water on there. Uh, this is gonna be for sketching out the concept. So we don't need to have a thick application of paint here. We wanna thin down that paint uh, so that it doesn't give us a texture when we're working. I'm gonna put a little crosshair where I, in general, where center is. I think it's actually like a little lower than that. Um, and then a little crosshair on the top, separating left and right, and then a little crosshair on the left side and right side, separating top from bottom. Now our canvas is in four approximate quadrants. It's not perfect, but we're just eyeballing this for now. Everybody's barns are gonna be different sizes. They're gonna look a little different, um, but I will try to guide you to paint things proportionately as I go. 
So first I want to do my little horizon line, which is, I think it's, hmm, let's put it, let's put it a little bit under halfway on like a bit of a slope. So then it comes out to be about halfway uh, from top to bottom there. That's where the field is, where the barn's going to be placed. And we've got some trees that come up. I'm gonna pretend like the barn doesn't exist for now just to get like an outline of where I want some trees to be. And the trees are gonna get smaller as they're getting farther away. And we'll have some sky and clouds up there. We're gonna have the barn next in our sketch. So for the barn, I would like the left side of the barn to be right at center. And you want your base of your barn to come down at a diagonal, a, just a very slight slope. So this would be the horizontal, just a, like a 10 degree or less slope. And that's the base of your barn. So that line's gonna get covered up that we put down initially. Just getting a little more water on my brush so I can keep sketching this out. And then next we're gonna place another vertical line right there. And we're gonna do just a little slightly higher angle than this line uh, going back. This one's gonna be going about there, just, just a little bit under horizontal, not quite horizontal. And then we are going to connect these two lines. So they should be slightly different. They shouldn't be exactly the same size. So this one's about this big. And this one, as you can see, is not quite as big as this one. Uh, and that's because that one is farther away from us. So it's gonna be just a little smaller. And we just want a nice, whoops, we just want a nice straight line that connects those two. And next we're gonna do the next part of the barn. So we're gonna have, basically where center is about there. Uh, we're gonna, so not quite halfway between these two spots. We're gonna put another vertical line. And over here, another vertical line is gonna keep that centered pretty well. And I made that line just a hair too tall, um, but it's gonna be basically like a flat horizontal line right there. And then you can have a bit higher on both sides of that line. Next, we're gonna do an angle like this. It's for our roof. And this is our front side here. So we're gonna have another angle roof right there. And as we're moving back, there's the roof again. Okay. And let's see here. We're we going to have the top part of the barn to make like a line come straight up from here. And then we can do our angles out. So if you want this to be precisely accurate, then you can follow the rules of perspective and stuff like that. I'm just eyeballing it for this one uh, to try to keep it a little more simple for a tutorial sake. And then we're gonna have a steep angle there. And we still want this to be this little dot slightly higher up. And this angle goes about right there. And we're starting to get the shape of the barn. Uh, then there's a bit of the roof that sticks out right here. So this is all in shadow. 
And then on this side, this roof is gonna angle down. Maybe not quite that steep. And these two lines should be not quite parallel. It's gonna be a bit steeper line in the back. And same with this one. And then there's gonna be just a little flat section there. And that part can come down there. All right, and then we can do more with the front of the barn later. Um, but for now, I'm just gonna touch that up. In general, we got the shape of the barn. Uh, so the next step is to put in the fence post here, just past center. So the right side of it's gonna be there. The left side of the fence post is gonna go right there. And the fence is gonna go up the hill. Let's make it go basically to the, hmm, let's make it go off the plane here. So it's like blocking off the front of the barn. I don't want it to go quite that far back. All right. Nice and close to the viewer there. We're gonna have a Another one here, piece of wood, wooden plank. And we'll do one more. There's a little line at the top of that wooden plank. And then right here, we'll do another one. And then we gotta get some vertical posts. So we'll just put this one right here. It's gonna block a little bit of the barn. And we want this post to be a bit more narrow than this one. So not quite as wide. Okay, and then we'll adjust this stuff later. But this plank is gonna go into there and then this will be covered. And then let's get, let's get the corner of the fence line here. So then this part of the fence, we'll just have it go this way. And we'll put another post right there. And we want these to kind of all come in and out of the same spot, like the wood beams should match up with one another in general. All right, and then we can add all of our flowers here uh, at the very end after we layer up some more of the fence and everything behind it. Okay, so we got the general sketch done now. So we can put this brush in the water and I'm gonna move to my flat tip brush and we can get started with painting the sky. So for the sky, I am going to take some white and a little bit of cobalt. So it's pretty light color here. And I just wanna brush very carefully uh, not super carefully, I guess it was the wrong word. Um, just loosely and lightly, not pressing too hard. Just putting a cloud in there and then we'll put another cloud like right there. Uh, maybe another cloud starting down here, but not quite as visible. Uh, and your clouds can be whatever shape you want. You know, for now I just did a quick little da -da 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 with the brush to uh, block those in. Uh, so we, next we are going to work on the sky behind the clouds and then we will paint in the clouds. With acrylic painting, I think clouds are a bit tricky because the uh, paint dries very quickly. When you're painting with oils, you have a lot more time to blend those soft, puffy cloud features. Uh, but you don't have that with 
acrylic painting. All right, so I'm starting out with some white, some phthalo blue, a little bit of cobalt blue, and a tiny bit of magenta. I'm just painting this in at the top. I'm gonna keep brushing in more white paint as I work my way down. So I'm just covering up the canvas at the top here first, going back and forth with the brush, making sure I get even paint on both sides of the brush. Back and forth. And the trick here is to work quickly. That can be pretty stressful if you are new to acrylic painting. Um, but the more you practice, the better you get at it. So I'm just going here, back and forth, kind of going up to the edges of where I put my cloud in. making sure all the white space is covered up on the canvas and making sure I don't leave any obvious like harsh brush strokes. Just wanna go back over a couple times, get nice and blended. And as I'm making my way down, I'm gonna mix in more white and a little phthalo green. Let's do even more phthalo green. right over this horizon, or not horizon line, but the tree line. Coming down under this cloud, and we'll do a little more phthalo blue. Some spots, let it kind of blend in. Just pushing the brush back and forth to get the nice sky look. more white. Oops, those are trees over there. That's okay. We can always paint over that. It's the beauty of acrylic painting. You can always paint over whatever you don't like. All right, I'm just taking the extra paint off that brush and I'm going to block in the clouds real quick with some cobalt. So white, cobalt, some umber. And that's pretty good for the base of the clouds. So looking at value, value is how light to dark something is. What I'm putting down here is a little darker in value than that sky below it. It's not too dark. It's lighter in value than what I sketched, but it's darker in value than that sky. And that's kind of what you also want to have. And it's nice if you are able to get your sky down and then start blocking in the, your clouds while the paint is still wet where you put the sky down because then you get a little bit of a blend, which will give you that nice soft cloud look. And I'm just putting this cobalt blue color at the base of each little cloud. I'm gonna build up a bit more cobalt with a tiny dab of naphthal red and some ochre. It's just giving me more of a neutral color and just lightly letting this go down in a couple spots where I want to build up a little bit of depth, just giving me a little variety in the colors in the cloud. Maybe even a little more cobalt over here. And if you want to use a filbert brush here, if that is easier for you to get a softer look, then you're welcome to do that. I'm just barely pressing with the brush on the canvas here, just getting, trying to get those nice textures. All right, and then I am gonna to switch to the filbert brush now. That's the semi-rounded top one. And I'm gonna take some white, a little bit of ochre, a little bit of purple, dioxazane purple, and I'm gonna mix that in on the brush, on the canvas. Going back and forth, still trying to work while my sky is a bit wet on the canvas here. So it's getting darker as it's coming down, you can see, because it's blending in with the blue sky that's already on here. So I'm, the amount of paint on my brush is not a lot anymore. I'm just kind of pushing. Now I am using more pressure and pushing it in there and lightly like lifting, not using as much pressure as I get to the spot where it's gonna blend with the blue background sky. And then I'm just going in here where I put that darker shadowy stuff down, pushing that paint around a little bit, uh, trying different amounts of pressure uh, to get different 
textures and fluffiness levels. <laughs> uh, next, I'm just taking a little bit more of that lighter color, blending it in here. Uh, and right now it's, it's pretty humid in here today and it's not that hot. It, I'm in uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania area. Uh, so my paint is being very nice to me right now and it's not drying that fast, but in the summer months, it does dry faster on me. Or if I'm in uh, a room with a pretty intense furnace in the winter, it's really dry and sometimes the paint will dry faster. Um, but right now I'm actually doing pretty well. I'm enjoying these clouds, which is <laughs> not something I always enjoy when I'm using acrylic paint. I'm uh, just blocking in this cloud down here, lightly brushing that in. And if you want your clouds to stand out a bit more, like building up the whites and uh, the warmth in the cloud, you can let that dry for a bit and then just come back with a bit more ochre, maybe a tiny dab of magenta. So a nice warm white color. I'm just gonna put some of this paint down on here just to keep building up that nice puffy, pretty soft cloud. Just not using a whole lot of pressure and there, see now I feel like there's too much paint on my brush, so I'm gonna take the paper towel, get the extra paint off the brush, and what I put down there now, I can go right around the edges very softly, and that is just softening everything up. You can do a little bit more magenta in some spots if you want a little more pink in your sky, helps to build up the depth and make your sky look less flat as well to have more colors. And do, let's do a little more ochre over here. So again, I think there's a little too much paint on the brush. It's not quite blending softly. So I took the extra paint off, very gently pressing around until I'm happy with that blended look. Put a little paint down then blend it. Very gently softly holding the brush and letting it gently glide on the canvas. And if, if you're having trouble getting the soft blend, you either have too much water on your brush or too much paint on your brush, or you're using too much pressure. Uh, it's definitely a trial and error thing to figure out what works best for you with pressure and pigments and paint. All right, I'm pretty happy with that sky. That's actually one of the softer skies I've done with acrylic paint. So I am gonna not fuss with that too much, <laughs> I say, and then I keep fussing with it. All right, that looks good. Now we can work on this tree line back here. So for the trees, we're gonna use some phthalo green. I left my phthalo green tube lid a jar. <laughs> so my phthalo green is uh, not looking so great right now. Um, so we're just mixing phthalo green and umber and some cobalt and some white. And I'm going to dip the brush in the water a bit just to loosen that up a little. All right, I'm just going to take this and keeping my filbert brush still, just going around the Back side of the barn, I want to add. A, I want to add like a pine tree or something back in here. So just working out from the center on this one to get that pine tree look, and then just a do 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 do. Just pushing the paint around, uh, going right up to the edges of the barn. And then we'll do like a little U there, a little 
it's not really a U, it's like a curve for the top of a tree. And then we can mix in a little more umber, cobalt. We'll just get this cluster of trees to separate a bit more. Getting all the brush off the paint, all the paint off the brush. <laughs> and then uh, as we're moving back, I'm gonna mix a little phthalo blue in there too. <clears throat> Maybe a bit more white, a little bit of magenta, because the trees are getting farther away from us. So we're starting to lose some of those warmer greens and starting to pick up a bit more of the blues and purples in our vision. And the paint behind it, the uh, sky is starting to get tacky now. As you can see, it's not really blending anymore, which is good because I don't want my tree line to blend into the sky. But I did want my clouds to blend into the sky. <laughs> and just fill, filling in all that empty space there. All right, so now we just got, you know, like a block in for where the trees are gonna go. And uh, now we can take some ochre and some olive, some titanium white. And let's do some cobalt just to cool that down a little. A little more white just to lighten it up. And then we can keep keep using the filbert brush. And let's see, we need to decide where our light source is gonna be in this painting. So the clouds are light up here. Uh, I'm thinking we're gonna have like this whole barn illuminated by light. So like the light source is more behind the viewer, uh, which would give us just like your standard uh, highlights and shadows on these trees. So we don't have to worry about having all of our highlights on one side and the shadows all on one side. Um, if the sun was behind the trees, then a lot of the foreground part of the tree would be more in shadow and there'd be little bits of the background of the tree illuminated with light. Um, but we're just gonna do a standard, the sun is behind us and it's normal sunny day, with the sun like up high in the sky. I'm gonna take a little bit of my cad yellow. I'm mixing it in over my sky color, just so like a little bit of that color will get in there. Getting the, just added some highlights to some of these little trees. I'm gonna mix a little phthalo green in. There's like a nice little patch of stubbier trees down here. Just kind of dabbing around with the brush. Okay, I can add another one there. All right, starting to move back more. I'm gonna mix more phthalo blue and umber and white, a little magenta. And we can add, oh, let's do more white. Start to add a few more little highlights in here. And uh, if, if your paint that you, you are putting down is not just layering over it, like it's blending, then you might be pressing too hard uh, or you might have put a little too much paint down initially where you put your trees. Um, and if that's happening, then just you can take a hairdryer to your painting and that'll make it dry faster before you start to build up this uh, next layer of highlights. Uh, or you could just wait you know, 15 minutes or so and the uh, underlying layer should get a bit tacky and then you can start to layer up your highlights. And let's get some more umber. We'll make more of like a pine tree back here. It's a lot more brown. Uh, mix in some um, uh, cobalt. And 
And when I'm painting a pine tree compared to like a deciduous tree, we have more of the like, straight lines coming out from a central point. When we're doing a more deciduous tree, we have more like patches of puffy highlights. But using more phthalo blue, white. Oops. Let's use some red and ochre to calm that down a little. We don't want to have things more saturated when they're far away. They should be a little less saturated. Okay, and then I'm just gonna add another little lighter set of bushes at the base of this part of the field there. And we'll touch that up more later. I'm gonna switch to my flat tip brush. And now I can add a little bit more shadows, uh, boost up some of the depth in the trees here. So I'm taking my phthalo blue and my olive green and some umber. And let's see, is that too dark? It's pretty dark. Let's, let's mix in a little ochre and some white and a little bit more umber just to mute it down a bit. And I'm just starting at the base, working my way up. You can put a little bit of a shadow in between the trees. I'm just really lightly pressing here, guys, just dabbing gently with the brush. Still making sure all those little white spaces are covered on the canvas, because if you miss anything, you have to rematch the color to go back, and that's sometimes challenging. Just mixed a little bit of magenta in, so the shadow over here isn't exactly the same as that shadow that I just put down. And just going in between where I had those highlights. And we'll do shadows around this little bush in there. Very gently playing around, pushing around a couple little shadows. Um, let's use more green for this one. And I'm not overly thinking about where they're going to go. It's just uh, finding a balance. So if you have a section that's like, wow, it's like a big block of highlight, then maybe break it up by adding a little shadow in there. If you think you have too much shadow and it's like if you there is more shadow at the base because uh, that's like the shadowy part where the field meets the forest but if you are trying to add in some shadows and you feel like towards the top of the tree there's just too much shadow then maybe add a highlight there to loosen that up and for my shadows for this pine tree I'm kind of doing some around it so towards the center, you can add a bit of your stump, make that visible. I'll take a little more green. And a little phthalo. Our shadows aren't going to have quite as dark value over here, not just a little bit less dark because they're a little farther away than the rest of the trees. I think I made that one too dark, so I'm just gonna go over that with a bit of white mixed in. All right, and then we want a deeper shadow over here. This is a uh, olive and umber deep shadow for this little cluster of branches and leaves. 
And this pine tree, I'm just going to go I dip my paint in the brush a bit because it's getting a little tacky. And I can just re-add the branches pulling away from that central spot. Just feathering out the little branches from there. Um, you can darken up this guy too a little more. And just add a few more back in this area. I just uh, layered over the highlights there. We can always build the highlights back up. All right, cleaned off my brush a little bit and I am gonna let the trees sit for now. And next thing is the field. Uh, and since it's a springtime field, I'm gonna use my larger flat tip brush and the colors are gonna be more green. I think in autumn we might see more of the golds in the field, um, but for springtime, I'm just gonna mix my olive green, phthalo green, ochre, and some white. And it looks really nice, it complements the trees, uh, and it's not too cool, it's warmer than the trees, so it stands out. I'm gonna mix more of this color, so we had phthalo green, white, ochre, and olive green. All right, and I'm just going right up to where my fence is. I'm going to make this a bit less steep of a slope, I think. Just covering up, just pit layering over a little bit of that there. Okay, and then for the Base of the barn, there we go. Blocking all the way up to my fence. Trying to get nice even coverage. And we can fill in the spaces in between the fence posts here. We can use a bit more ochre when we're up this close. And if you uh, paint over your fence a little bit, that's okay. It's actually better to do that than to leave like an empty space that you have to rematch that color later. So I'm doing that, just covering up the fence a little bit more. And I can always go back and layer up the fence when we get to it. Making sure I'm not leaving any white space. And we don't have a whole lot of texture yet. I'm trying to get a nice thick application of paint. I'm gonna mix some more um, umber into this here. We're gonna have a bit more of a shadow down at the base and that also helps to draw our attention a little farther back. And for now, we'll just keep this uh, pretending like we don't have the wildflowers anywhere yet. We'll add those in later. Mixing in more white and ochre. Trying to fill in the space. Working pretty quickly so that I can do a little blending before all this paint dries. All right, so no white space. If there is, we'll just either make the fences thicker or 
do something about that. All right, now I'm gonna take more white and a bit of my cad yellow medium, a little bit of my naphthal red. And I'm trying not to get too, too much on the brush, um, but I do wanna just do a little bit back and forth so it blends into that green and just adds a little bit more like texture to the field in the background. Just kind of zigzagging. I'm not doing like a perfect even coverage. I'm leaving the original color down in some spots. And next we can do more white and green. And let's just do a couple little, let's do even more white. There's a couple little spots where just highlighting going back and forth with the brush. Don't want to leave any little like white spots or streaks like that. We want to kind of buff those out, but we don't want it to be like a perfectly smooth transition. You want to leave it a little choppy, but nothing too crazy. Then we can take our green and umber and just go in and same thing, but now we're just putting little shadows under some of those highlights. We can do one over here in the back side of the barn. Maybe like a little right in front of the barn. Uh, there's probably gonna be a little shadow from the fence. Here we can make some cobalt and some umber and kind of work this in here while the paint's still kind of wet. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but it shows there's a shadow and the light source is coming from behind us. All right, I'm liking that. Looks pretty good. Okay, so now the grass is not like a super smooth uh, texture, it's got a little bit going on there. It gives that little rough grass look. Okay, uh, now we're gonna put the big brush away and go back to our smaller flat tip brush. We wanna have this nice and clean because the next step is the barn. And with the barn, I'm going to start, I'm gonna start with the red because I feel like it. <laughs> uh, so we're gonna take the naphtha red and some magenta and some umber. Let's do a little bit of cad yellow and some more magenta. I'm trying to get a nice red that's not too, not exactly that color, but not exactly this cool magenta either. This makes a little bit of ochre in there. Yeah, that's a good color. Okay, so we got uh, naphtha red light, magenta, ochre, a little bit of that yellow and a little bit of umber. And I'm just gonna paint this whole thing. I guess I'll, I'll leave like a little spot there just so I know where the line should be for the doors. But other than that, I'm gonna just fill this all in right up to the outline of the shape. And if you're looking at your painting right now and thinking that it looks nothing like my painting, you are not alone. I've taught classes before and I've taught paint and sips and actual instruction on acrylic painting. And whenever we do demonstrations or group, group exercises where everyone paints the same thing, it never looks the same. Like everyone's is different. Everybody interprets direction differently and Everybody has their own vision for how their painting's gonna turn out. So just because your painting doesn't look exactly like my painting, that is not a bad thing. So that's a good thing. All right, 
mixing a little more of this color because I used it all up. You want to go right down to your grass. And you do want to have a nice solid line for the base of your barn. And this is our uh, base paint layer. We are going to add a little bit more to the barn to brighten it up. All right, uh, and they're both lit up by the sunlight. I think I'm gonna have the sun uh, is over here. So I'm gonna make it just a bit warmer on this side. So I mixed in a little bit more white and uh, naphthol red light and cad yellow medium to get this a little bit lighter color there. Uh, and then I'll go back to my darker red by mixing in more umber and magenta and we're just gonna have a little shadow under here all right so we got the red in there uh, next we're gonna do a little bit more of the textures going on in the barn so we're gonna take some umber some Doxazine purple, just mixing it right in with those other reds we had there. And we can do a little line, just connecting this to this, just where the top of the barn doors go. And then we can do some, just straight up and down. Just holding the brush so I can hold it this way so I'm getting a thinner line. Maybe we do just a little shadow under the top part as well with that color because the roof sticks out just a little from the front. All right, that looks good. And I'll go back over here with these little lines. A couple up here. So we're not doing too much yet. Just getting, just getting a little bit more going on there. And we'll do a bit more over here too, and just some vertical lines. All right, and then we're gonna move to the roof next. And for the roof, we're gonna use white ochre, Cobalt and Umber. And that gives us this nice warm neutral gray. I'm gonna mix a little bit more water into that so I can get a little bit better control. And you can focus nicely here to get these uh, angles accurate. Okay, got that spot there. And the next one is gonna be, the next one down is gonna be pretty similar in color and value. So for now, I'm just gonna start with that. Gotta fix that angle. And I kind of jacked up that angle, but that'll be easy fix. We can fix that up later. Okay, and this is like a nice deep shadow there, but I'm not gonna do that yet. I'm gonna mix in a little white and get this top one, because the top one's gonna be lighter. Okay, 
It's going back and forth, filling in that shape there. And these are blending just a little bit. I'm just going to touch that up a little. Okay, and then you can take a little bit of cobalt. And I just want to add a little bit of that to the roof so it's not all... And I'm kind of dabbing the paint a little too. I don't want it all to be the exact same. I can take more of our cobalt and umber. A little more umber. And I can do this nice little line to get the top. Okay, and we want to get the back outlined as well. And there's going to be a little darker line where these two meet. And you can blend that just Go back and forth. And this guy is a little darker. There we go. And then under here is the next one. We want to mix in more umber, maybe a little thalo, some of our dark red. So thalo, umber, and magenta. Let's mix in a little bit of naphthal too. Yeah, that's good. Nice deep shadow. And I still want this angle to be up a little bit there. All right. And we've got a dark shadow under here. I'm going to mix some ochre in to the color I just had. So it's a bit more of just a brown. And this whole area is covered up with that. Okay. Looks pretty nice. Uh, I'm going to tweak these little spots a bit. So this is where you can just play around with your angles. Make sure everything looks like a nice straight line. Has a, the correct planes. Okay, now I'm going to mix in well, let's do a little bit blue with our umber and try to mix a bit more of a shadow into this spot. Okay, and then we can take this darker color again and touch up this one. And we'll go back to our naphthal red. Touch up our highlights there. Build the shadows down a bit more. Okay, I'm liking that. And we can touch up this spot back here with just some phthalo green umber. Take a bit more white with the umber. Just touching up that line one more time there. Okay, and then I can use my liner brush for the barn. Now that this is starting to dry in the front a little more, I'm going to take my white with that bit of cobalt and uh, what was the other 
um, ochre <laughs> and I can touch up this edge Okay, and let's just touch up this edge here. This is lit up with the sunlight too. So I get a little bit more water on my brush when I'm doing a liner brush line. All right, that looks nice. And we can do a little bit more here too. You can just do a couple little lines like that if you want to get a little bit of the roof texture in the barn. And I think that looks pretty nice. The angles aren't perfect, um, but it's, it's something. <laughs> All right, now let's do the little patterns on the barn door. So I'm going to take my white and just put a nice little line down right there, dipping it in the water a little more. And look at this one. I'm going to do one through center, go straight down, they have the same markings at the base. And then I'm going to do a big X. So I'm not using pure white here, guys. I'm using more of the top roof color. If we use a pure white, it is just going to stand out too much. It's going diagonal to diagonal. Make sure where your X's crisscross are about on the same uh, area there, plane. And we'll do one right up here. All right, looks pretty good. And then we can uh, take our naphthol red light, some ochre, and a little white. And with our liner brush, we can add some highlights, just like little streaks on the front of the barn. It gives us a bit more of that wooden, painted red wood texture.
Mix in a little yellow, white. And I painted over my white a little, so I'm just going to touch that up. Okay. Looks nice. I think that I'm going to touch up this one section that the thing that's bothering me is that this is not symmetrical. Like this side has like a little section there. That makes more sense. And then I can just touch that up. Just bring the trees out. And there we go. I'm going to play with that more later. <laughs> um, but for now, let's work on the fence line. So for the fence, I'm going to need a bit more white. I'm going to take some white and some umber. And we'll just start with that. Maybe a bit of ochre too. bit more ochre. All right, and we're just going to take our flat tip brush. Just fill this in. Can use a little bit of purple. A little more ochre. Filling in the top side here. Holding the brush pretty gently. Trying to get this nice smooth line. And over here it's starting to blend in with my red, which means my red's just not dry yet. So we'll let that sit for a bit and we'll layer up that later. And I'm going to mix in more umber for this bottom one, a little bit of purple. Maybe a little cobalt, ochre. All right, mix in some yellow and red, white, umber. Oops, a little too much red. You can mix a little bit of thalo green in there to offset the red. 
and I'm just going to do a vertical. So the vertical one on this side, actually, we're going to use more umber and some cobalt. And we're just going to go right to the, in between these two posts, three posts. And this side, we're going to paint that shadow in there. Okay, and then moving back to the highlights, more white with the umber. Okay, same thing right here. And then more white at the top. Filling in the space over here. All right, we'll mix in a little more umber and ochre. And this one I'm just gonna you know what? I don't think it would show through there. We're going to cover that up. I do need to thicken this piece. Filling in this base one over here. Okay, and then we'll get the highlights, a little bit more ochre for the top part of the fence post or fence uh, horizontal piece. All right, and let's get some more ochre and umber. And well, let's do more umber. And I'm just going to put a deeper shadow right under the highlight spot so we can have it stand out. And then just pushing the paint around. The paint's starting to get a little tacky, but it's giving me that more weathered wood texture, so I like that. Just don't come all the way to the top. You want to leave a little space there for that highlight on the top of the uh, wood plank. And this uh, umber is just kind of brushing in there. I'm um, using different amounts of texture to get the right look, that like wooden, grainy look. All right, I'm going to fix the highlights down here, make them a little brighter. Okay, and over here, let's do that same thing where we take some umber. The paint's still kind of tacky, so it's blending in a little. I'm 
Gonna take more of my umber and cobalt shadowy brown color. Let's darken this up a little, separate those. I want to separate this top of this post. Just fill in these ones. I'm going to get the shadow on this side over here. All right, so now that we have the fence post in general blocked in, we're gonna start by adding some flowers. Uh, I guess, you know what, real quick, let's take a little bit of ochre, which I have barely any left on here. And I just wanna add a little more of that to my fence. All right. And now we can work on the flowers. So I'm going to start with some phthalo green mixed with my olive green and a little bit of my dioxazine purple and some yellow. Can mix in some magenta as well. A little bit of olive. I just want to get like a dark, cooler green. And I'm mixing a little water in here because my paint's starting to get a bit tacky. Uh, so now I'm just going to take my flat tip brush. If you want to use a liner brush for this, you can. Uh, and we're just going to start to add some little spots where we're going to have stalks for flowers. And you can try using different amounts of pressure on your brush. Try different angles. You don't want these all to be the same. Now some nice tall ones over here. Mix a little umber in there too, just to darken that down even more. Uh, throw a few more up here. I think I want these to cover up some of that tree line in the background. And we'll just keep adding a few more of these little stalks. They don't have to be perfectly symmetrical or uh, all clustered in one spot. You can put these flowers wherever you like in your painting. All right, so now that we've got some stalks, I'm gonna add another nice tall one there. Uh, then we can start to add some of the flowers that go on there. Um, but before I do that, I'm just gonna mix a bit more umber and phthalo blue. And I'm just gonna go up and down, back and forth right here. This is just creating like a nice little base shadow spot with some grasses um, where this is all going to get covered up with more leaves and different flowers. So we just want to block that in. You can just mix your blues and greens together to get this nice dark base color. And you basically you want to stop this or make it start to tone down uh, at center. Just start to get to just come down like about to there. And you want to good. Good coverage. All right, nice, I'm liking that. Um, with this flat tip brush, I'm gonna take my magenta and some cobalt blue. And you can mix whatever colors you'd like 
here. Um, but these are going to be like lupin type flowers is kind of what they appear to be. So I'm going to start out with a little bit more of that cobalt and purple. And we're just going to start at the base and just kind of dab around and work your way up. Got a couple different spots with a lot of these pretty flowers. Just dabbing the paint on and little clusters making this longer uh, line almost. So it starts out a little bit wider at the base and it's a little bit less wide at the top part. And you don't want them all to be perfectly parallel. Like I was starting to notice those looked a little too parallel to one another. So I'm starting to add in some more variation in the angles. Just starting with this deeper blue color for basically all of them. Uh, and then we'll start to add more variations in uh, texture and changes in value giving us some highlights and stuff as we keep working. And they're not all going to be perfectly visible. Some of them are going to cover up other ones. So you might have like a big cluster of purple in some spots. This one got a little more magenta in it, but that's okay. Covering up my post a bit there, but that's okay. And just now this gives us a really clear separation of foreground, middle ground, and background, and uh, it gives us a little more exciting foreground than just the fence. I'm just going to do this for every stock that I put in here and that'll give me all these different little flowers and once I get these down then I'll start to add my highlights. Okay, let's do another one up here. Okay, another one right here. And I want to take this time to mention that if you have uh, ideas or recommendations for future painting tutorials, other paintings you'd like to see me create as YouTube tutorials, uh, then just leave a comment under this video and let me know your ideas and I'll add them to my list of things to paint. This is one that had been requested by a few people. They actually requested for me to just redo the other barn painting, but I don't like to do the same painting twice, so I made this one, which is a similar painting, but just a little more exciting for me to paint a new scene. All right, so we got those shadows in there. Uh, now we're going to mix more white in and a little more magenta. And if you want to use your liner brush here, you can. That'll give you even more uh, separation. I want to mix even more white in. So some of these I want to have a little bit more of this lighter, warmer purple. And for some of them, I want to have a lighter, cooler purple. And that'll just give us a little more variation in the flowers. So I'm just, as you can see, not fully covering what I had down. Just letting the brush very lightly press around in different areas, uh, more like on the tops of each little cluster of flower where the light would be hitting them. And I'm just picking and choosing random little ones to add this highlight to, and then I'll go back and mix in a bit more blue and do some with more blue.
and that'll give us a little bit different colors subtly but it'll make the lupins look less flat or whatever these plants are <laughs> all right a little bit up here this guy and one on this one and we'll do one more on this one just very lightly pressing Okay, and then I can mix in more cobalt and white. Now we have this really pretty light blue, which is different than our light purple, but still, it's, you can still tell it's the same flower by the way we're putting the brush strokes down. Okay, and I'm putting some over here too. And don't overthink it. I'm really just lightly pressing in a couple little spots. You don't want to overdo it with the highlights because if you completely cover up all your shadows, then it just looks like a blob of that light blue or light purple color. So I'm just dabbing some spots here. And I'm holding the brush at an angle and trying to get like the corners of the brush to touch on the canvas. And that's giving me little different types of coverage. Oh, got a little bit much there, but that's okay. That one's low down, so it's probably gonna get covered up with other flowers. All right, and just like that, we got all those in there. Um, now I'm gonna put in some leaves. So I'm gonna take my white with my olive green and some of my cad yellow medium. And we're gonna, let's do a few more stalks first. These ones are a little more Focused on this side. Okay. Put a couple right down there. And then I can start to add my little leaves. So I'm gonna mix a bit more white in there. Let's get a little lighter. And I'm just holding the brush and starting out at the stalks and starting with a little bit wider at the base and then it gets more narrow as each little leaf makes its way away from the stalk there. And we'll get, just add these little leaves all over the place. Don't want them to be perfectly symmetrical. They're gonna stand out a bit from one another. Uh, we can take just some nice olive green and add some little shadows under some of them. Add a few more little leaves in different spots. You can mix in a little bit of purple and your phthalo green. That can just keep building up different leaves in different spots. But we started out with that really dark color and that uh, was helpful because now we're layering up over that and it looks like it's dark and shadow under there. All right, let me just add some highlights to some leaves now. Mostly ones a little closer to the tops. There. Okay, and now let's add some more flowers. So we're gonna I'm not sure what these ones are called, um, but maybe you can tell me in the comments. <laughs> so we have uh, magenta and we have phthalo blue and we'll do a little bit of yellow in there too. Cause it's like a brownish red. And I'm just gonna do a couple little 
spots right there. These are a little bit larger. And another one down here. Put one right there. And I'm just starting with the shadow base color. Uh, there's going to be a couple that are behind some leaves, so you can put those in there as well, just so it's, you know, not perfectly all front and center. Uh, this one we can put shaped a little differently. Same with this one. And let's do one more right down there. And let's do one right here. All right, that looks good. And then we're going to take some red, naphthal red light with some magenta and some white. And some yellow. And we'll just add some dabs of paint at the top of each of these little flowers here. That's the highlighted part. And this one's in shadow a bit more down here, so not pressing quite as hard. All right, this one's going to be nice and bright up here. Okay, and we could take more magenta. As we're moving a little farther down, there's a bit more shadow. And we're going to just keep going around this central spot on the flowers. All right, and I can take some more naphthal red light and white. And we'll get a nice pretty light highlight because it's like a nice light pink color. Uh, and this will be like the top center, center part of each flower. So I'm just going to mix that white in with my red and let it go in the top of each spot there. And not every flower is going to get this. This is like a nice brighter section that's only on the ones that are up in the light. Oh, I mixed a little purple in there. There we go. All good. Okay, and then we have like a nice yellow center for each of these. It looks pretty. There's that there. Put one right there. One right there and right there. And these ones you can't see too much, but I'll put a little dab there. And then I just want to quickly add in a bit more leaves. Uh, maybe redefine the stalk stem of these flowers a little. And whoops, a little bit of that color blended in there. That's okay. I can just add a few more little leaves. Okay, and another couple little One's down there. And I'm just going to add a few more little pretty leaves. Um, maybe a bit more grass. All right. And that pretty much wraps it up, guys. There are more things you can do to add a bit more depth to the painting. Uh, we can boost highlights on some of those trees in the background. We can uh, add like with the liner brush, we can get a little bit more uh, highlights on the stems to some of these plants. Uh, there's a lot more subtle little things that we can do to help give this painting depth. Uh, but in general, this is the painting process. So we're almost done. Uh, you can add a bit of grass with a bit more texture in the back. So this is something we could have done a while ago. It's just going to give 
a little bit more uh, depth to the fence. So it just looked a little too flat for me. So that just added a bit more there. Can make a deeper shadow right there. All right, guys, I am going to call that a finished painting for now. For this tutorial purposes, uh, I think I am going to do a few more touch ups to it before I uh, have this scanned and available uh, for art prints. But I hope you enjoyed this painting tutorial. Have a wonderful day and happy painting.